Hello guys and welcome to the second part of my Path of Exile beginner series. In the last part we took a closer look at each class and what they can specialize in and I made a suggestion for a skill that you might use in your first playthrough through the campaign. Now in this part we're going to take a closer look at the settings of Path of Exile because there are quite a few that you should definitely enable and a few things that you should also definitely change. Now let's start. Um, in the beginning we're going to take a look at the graphic settings. Now again most of the stuff you will probably have to adjust according to your system but there is a bit of general advice that I can give you uh, but before that I'd like to talk about the renderer. Um, so for example I started using Direct 11 right when I played Path of Exile for the first time I was using Direct X 11 uh, but then an update came and it felt shit. It was very laggy. I, I wasn't happy with it. So I then switched to Vulkan but you guessed it, well, a few weeks later, another update and Vulcan felt terrible too. Uh, since then, I've been using DirectX 12 and I can only recommend it to you. Um, well, based, of course, on your PC if it works. But for me, it works great. So uh, I haven't had any issues so far since I've switched to DirectX 12. Now, detail settings, of course, really depend on how beefy your PC is. If your PC has good hardware, you can definitely crank them up a bit. Uh, I prefer to play on the absolute minimum settings simply because I rather have a smooth gameplay than, you know, a, some a nice looking game, basically. But settings that I highly recommend you to enable here is dynamic culling. Now, basically what dynamic culling is, uh, it enables the game or it allows the game to always try to stay above a certain frame rate. Um, if the game thinks that you will drop below that frame rate, it will basically decrease the quality of visual effects to make sure that your frame rate stays consistent. So if you don't like frame rate drops, this is definitely the option for you. Um, dynamic resolution and engine multi-threading are definitely options that you should enable, but they are enabled by default, so don't change them to be disabled, please. Um, Next step, we are going to take a talk about something very important, uh, but only after we talk about the networking mode, because we have three options here. We have automatic, we have lockstep, and we have predictive. Now, if you play hardcore or you don't like dying a lot, I definitely recommend you to play lockstep, because you will immediately notice when the game becomes laggy and will have time to react. While when you play predictive, yeah, sometimes you, you don't notice that right away, you don't notice that immediately, and suddenly your character doesn't move, you you know walk into a void zone and you die. It's not a very pleasant experience, is it? Um, so if you don't like dying or you play hardcore, lockstep is definitely the option for you. Now we come to the probably most important part of these settings, and that is the item filter. Now in the very early acts, like one, two, three, four, it doesn't really make that much of a difference. But the later you get, uh, the further you progress in the campaign, I should say, and the more you get into the end game, the more important a filter becomes, simply because the amount of items that will drop will increase massively and you will have no idea. Your screen will be cluttered in items and names and yeah, you will not be able to decide what actually is a good item and what is not. And actually I have an example for here, you, for, uh, here for you. So as you can see, <clears throat> I have, for example, this item in my inventory. Uh, if you don't know what that is, it's not a problem at all. It's basically a leveling item that people really love to use to basically speed up the leveling process of another character. You can only find this item uh, starting with... Well, no, actually, that's not true. You can always find an item because it's a random world drop, but you can farm it starting with Act uh, 9, I believe. So, yeah, basically, if you see if I drop it on the eye on the ground, um, what maybe gives away that is a good item is that the name is orange, but uh, how much of an indication is that? Now, the problem here is that um, we do not have sound, actually. I just remember that. Let me let me actually fix the sound really quick. Okay, I'm back, guys. Sorry for that. Um, but if we now, for example, drop the rope again, uh, we do see we have no noise, right? And if you, for example, would kill a mob uh, or a monster, um, not only by, you know, hitting it and instantly killing it by, I don't know, inflicting a poison uh, dot effect or, I don't know, an ignite effect that would kill the monster over a certain uh, period of time. And then you would inflict it and you would just, you know, use the movement skill and etc. Uh, you wouldn't even see it if the monster died here and dropped the item because you would, there would be no, 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 nothing that would basically tell you that the item dropped. Uh, same goes, for example, for, for very expensive items, right? For example, a divine orb. 
there's a slight sound. I don't know if you actually heard that. Probably you probably did. Um, but if you listen to music on the way, uh, basically <laughs> to your destiny, uh, to destination, um, or do you talk to your friends, I don't know, via Discord or something, very, very easy to, to basically not notice that. And we have to change that because the more loot you basically will encounter, the easier it is to basically, um, do not, do not notice these things. And what we do is we use a filter. Now I will show you how to use a filter, etc. um, shortly after that, but I will just want you to see the difference. So if you, for example, now drop the rope, yeah, you can see the effect is a lot different. We actually have a sound effect now, right? Um, it's much more visually clear here. The, the visual clarity has increased. Uh, the nameplate is bigger. Just everything it makes it much easier, much more easy to see. Uh, makes it easier to see. Now, if we take a divine orb, for example, right? Before that, we had a small tink, just really a small tink. Now, yeah, massive tink. <laughs> As you can see, the nameplate, right? White and, and red. Um, red text very easy to see and we have the beam as well i can only highly recommend you to use a filter now how do i get such a filter well the answer is actually quite easy um because what you have to do is give me a second here um okay what we have to do is we have to go to filter blade a filter blade website where you can create your own filter now this is a bit advanced for beginner i don't suggest you to try to build your own filter right away but it's a very very easy process uh, ideally you are at the starting point that you see right here and what i want you to do is to always select never sync softcore which should be a default option um, by default i think it is uh, the, you know the slider is on semi strict so definitely use that and the style that you want, you can, you know, it's it, basically your own choice, right? Uh, I always like to go with the default mode or the normal, normal option, basically. But again, there are different color schemes and you can pick what you like the most. Now, if we then decided what, you know, color scheme you want to use, um, you can all skip all these steps basically and you can go to save and export. Now, when you logged in in Filterblade and you connected your Path of Exile account, you can simply basically save and uh, synchronize the filter with your game. And after you've done that, um, if you go back to your game, your filter should basically appear here. And that is the filter that I basically used and the filter that you will have. I named it this way, you can name it whatever you want. Now, when we go over other things, so for example, we have the option hide filtered ground items. I believe that it is on by default. If not, definitely turn that on. What that effect, basically what that setting does is, uh, as I said, the item filter hides certain items. And in the end game, when hundreds and hundreds of items are dropping, and instead of, you know, all of them being shown, only five are shown, all the other 95 items are not even rendered. So it's, it's a massive, FPS and performance increase, so absolutely enable that setting. Now, key pickup, I don't actually even know what that is for. I disabled that, I've never been able to hide the problem. Uh, corpse targeting, if you know, I if you press A, I think that's that's a nice option, especially um, when you you know have a skill, for example, Spectres, which is a minion skill where you would use corpses to basically raise to summon your minion, you would consume a corpse, and that corpse would be resummoned as a minion. So this is when you hold A, which I can definitely advise. Um, auto equip can be nice. Um, I have it enabled. You don't have to. Really depends on on what you like. Uh, generally, I think it's okay if you enable it. Um, it should be much of a problem, really. Okay. Uh, the other things are not really that important. I think it's for group play. So yeah, not really that important. Then we go to the UI. So of course, select the language that you want to, you know, your game that you want your game to be in, to, in basically. And yeah, chat language. Um, I just, you know, use I'm using English as well. It really depends on your preference. Quest tracking highly recommended. I'm not sure why, which of these are actually enabled by default, but I know the show clock is not enabled. So if you want to have that clock that I have here on the bottom, um, then yeah, you should definitely enable that clock. Uh, what else? Mouse wheel zoom. Yeah, again don't have to you can use that if you want if you don't need that then yeah you can disable that now map is also something that is entirely up to preference so for example if i press tap i don't know if you knew that but if you press tap you get basically a small map in the middle of the screen that helps you navigate a zone now as you can see the map now looks like this i can go a bit to the left and 
you then can see it better. But I can, for example, you make it like look like this as well, and then you, you see all the terrain that is basically surrounding the zone. Um, if that is too distracting for you, or it's like oh, I can't really see anything because you know uh, there's no visual clarity, basically, uh, you can just reduce it as far as you want, or you know basically remove it entirely. Sorry, remove it entirely as I did. Uh, same goes for the map transparency. Um, of course, uh, yeah, I, I, it's a, I think I don't have to explain that. It's same with map zoom, right? Just pick what you like, uh, etc. Show only names on your plate. Um, in your first playthrough, it doesn't really matter, right? I have enabled, I think it's enabled by default anyway. Now we have come to effects. I have disabled all these effects because I don't like screen shake. I, I don't like the ultimatum effect. Basically, it blurs the screen kind of. I don't, I don't like these effects. You can enable them if you want. I disable them right away. Now we come to the item part. Um, for example, we have your always show socket. So if I disable that, you know, you have to hover over the item for the sockets to be shown. Um, I think this is a hassle. I, I, I don't need that. I, I want my items, uh, my, my sockets to always be visible. Um, but when you, for example, colorblind, this is an option here for you that is very important because you enable that the sockets have patterns. So if you have a problem, you know, um, you know, deciding what is green, what is red. Um, this can help massively when it comes to uh, making sure that you're fitting the, the right gem in the right socket. Uh, I don't need that as I'm not colorblind, so I'm using the default option. Um, again, other stuff, I'm not sure what is default, but I can highly suggest you to show your life and mana uh, levels. Um, why, why wouldn't you? It's, it's more information, can only be beneficial to you. Uh, aura icons, so that when you have an aura on the left, it's actually it's, it's shown, right? You can see the aura that it's basically in effect. Um, same for, for mini life bars, enemies, allies, buff you. It's for example, the life bar buff you. If you don't want that, you can just remove that. I like to have that so I don't have to, to look in the bottom left or the bottom right to see what my life or my mana pool is like, um, and etc. etc. Now we also have different cursor options, right? I have the regular small one, but you can go with the green one and you can go large right if you have trouble you know finding your cursor on the screen which can actually be quite troublesome if a lot is going on it can happen quite easily that you lose track of your cursor so if that's a problem for you you can absolutely choose a different cursor here but for the sake um, you know of having the same cursor throughout the video I'm gonna change back now there are different settings about the chat um, but yeah not too important really and something I can cover when you're, for example, in a chat and you are, in the, you are basically, I think they are all enabled by default. Uh, if you don't want to see what other people write, you can simply click here and disable the global chat and disable the trade chat. Uh, local as well, but local really, who writes in local, right? People in, in town, maybe. Other than that, you probably don't see people writing in the local chat very often. Other, well, especially if you, you know, in the campaign or doing your own thing and in maps in the end game. Okay, let's go over the uh, remaining settings. So sound again, right? I don't have to teach you anything. Um, change the settings the way you like, that the way that they feel the best for you. You can have muted in the background. I don't like to do that simply because I then uh, immediately know whether my game crashed or not. Because I know oh, I don't hear anything. Okay, my game probably crashed. But yeah, it's a, I don't know. It's um, if you don't like hearing the sound in the background, then you can, of course, use that. Now, input is um, the uh, basically, you know, what keys you basically use for certain um, for certain slots. So I changed that quite a bit. For example, I used spacebar and I used my mouse. As you can see here, when you press, for example, if you press control, right? If you press control, if you're wondering, oh, how is he doing that? If you press control, you will change the bar. So, for example, if I'm if this bar skill bar would be full, but I have a new skill, I can simply go here, click here, and then put the skill in that bar, and just press control and Q, and then press it. Now, another tip that I will actually give you here is that you can click on the ability, and then you have the option always attack without moving. You basically want to use that for every ability, uh, nearly every ability. A few movement skills. Uh, some don't like it and they do weird things if you enable that. For for most skills, general most skills, attack skills, skills, spells, you always want to move the enable that because what that skill actually does, I can actually show you. For example, as you can see my character can throw here, but if I click here, what happens? Okay, you can still throw it, but at some point, Okay, okay, you can, you can throw it very far. Okay, it's a, it's a bad example. But basically, well, if you, for example, if you would have a totem or something, there's only a certain range in which you can place the totem. And if you do not have this enabled and you click very far, your character will then walk until he's able to place the totem. 
Well, if you enable this, he will immediately place the totem um, as well, basically on your cursor location. And if your cursor is outside of the radius, he will then place the totems inside the radius. Uh, of course, very, very, um, not very far from the border, as as near as to the border as possible, but still in the, in the direction of your cursor. So the character will then not walk a certain distance to place the uh, totems where your cursor was. Very, very nice because it prevents a lot of deaths because you don't run into packs while trying to, you know, cast or you know, put a totem down and mobs are hitting you and you die. Don't do that. Please, please enable that. It's a quality of life change for sure. Okay. Um, yeah, again, input. If you have certain controls that you or keys that you absolutely want to use, you can change that here. Um, notifications, uh, I think just enable all. Really, just enable all. There is there is no downside. Um, if you get spammed with party invites, whatever you would, <laughs> then uh, yeah, you, of course you can change that. Or if you have too many friends and they change their status all the time and you're annoyed, you can change it here. But other than that, I would say leave that um, well on the default basically leave the default settings be and and do your own thing so in general as a short summary um try out the renderer right different ones see which one works best for you uh, i always go with the minimal settings enable all these three um get the loot filter for sure right i can drop one again chaos orb for example exalted orb divine right you definitely you can already already tell even if you don't know what the items do you can already tell which one's the most expensive one right and uh, yeah sound again is your choice input your choice notifications your choice as well nothing too important that was it i hope uh, you learned something i hope um you basically learn how to get a loot filter i can do a video in the future as well where i go into more detail how you can customize a loot filter if you want other than that, uh, thank you very much for watching and I hope you have a great time playing Path of Exile. And if you liked the video, I would very much appreciate it if you would subscribe to my channel because this is a series I plan to continue for quite a long time and there are a lot, a lot of topics to cover in Path of Exile for complete bloody new beginners. See ya guys.